Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to optimize your Unify network. This would work for different networks as well if you're using TP-Link, but there are a few things that are proprietary within Ubiquity. So we'll go over how I would set up my network devices as well as some settings to make our Wi-Fi better. If you'd like to support my channel, the best way to do so is to hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, you could visit MacTelecomNetworks.com. And I do have affiliate links down in the description below. So first off, let's take a look at my network topology and how I do it. Since I have over two switches, I use an aggregation switch and I'm using the aggregation pro. You don't need to go with this switch. They do have a cheaper model with only eight ports. But one thing that we want to try to avoid is daisy chaining all of our switches together. At the top, we have my UDM SE, which has a primary and a secondary internet connection. And this next step is pretty crucial. So connecting to my aggregation switch, I'm using a DAC cable between my UDM SE to the switch. And the reason I don't use these eight ports on the front is because they share a one gigabit backplane. What I do use those ports for are for things like my Philips Hue controller that are low bandwidth. And over on the screen here, this is what the DAC cable looks like. It has two SFP plus modules built in, and I will put a link down in the description below for that. Another thing that you could do to provide redundancy in your network is to have two cables going between your switches and then putting them in a lag group. So if one of the cables fails, the other one will still be active. You could do that by logging into the switches and then configuring them as a aggregation. And this is what the aggregation looks like. You can see this arrow icon, which means aggregate. So port 25 and 26 are aggregated together. We could see the operations is aggregate and the ports are from 25 to 26. I do have another video on that and I'll post it down below. Now let's take a look at optimizing our Wi-Fi and Ubiquity introduced this global AP settings a couple firmware versions ago. So if all your APs are part of the global group, they'll all get the same settings. So we have settings for our 2.4, our 5 gigahertz, and then our 6 gigahertz if you're using one of their enterprise APs. For 2.4 gigahertz radio, we always want the channel width to be 20. You never want to go to 40 as you're going to cause yourself severe interference. For five gigahertz, I usually have the channel width on 40. If you want faster speeds, you can bump it up to 80. But if you do have a lot of neighbors around you or different Wi-Fi devices, it could also cause you interference. And then by default, the six gigahertz radio is set to 160. The transmit power for all of these channels are set to auto, which means high, and you can mess around with that to see which works for you. If you didn't want an access point, a part of this global group, you could put them in this exclusion list, we're gonna actually take both of my access points out and do channel selection manually. Now, one thing that could help with your Wi-Fi if you don't have any wireless meshing devices, so if you don't have any of their smart plugs, or if you don't have an AP just plugged into power with a PoE injector, you could turn wireless meshing off. And it comes up with this warning, disabling wireless meshing will prevent wireless device adoption and remove existing meshing links. So you need to make sure that you don't have any wireless meshing devices I don't, so I'm going to confirm. Now on my device page, let's click on one of the APs and I'm going to click on the U6 in wall. Here it's going to tell us a few things. We could see our Wi-Fi experience and there was a dropout. That's because I was upgrading my UDM SE. But besides that, it's been stable. We could also see on the 2.4 gigahertz, we have seven clients that are operating on 2x2 Wi-Fi 6. And on the 5 gigahertz on 40 megahertz channel, we have four by four Wi-Fi six and there's three clients. It's new that Ubiquity introduced in a firmware update. We have the insights and it's telling us the history of what happened with the AP. So we could see the U6 in wall move from channel 161 to 157 to optimize its wireless performance. And this will only happen if we have channel optimization turned on under our Wi-Fi networks. Another thing to look at within our access points is this channel usage. And right now, what I wanna look for is this green, which means interference. And as you can tell, there's very little interference within this access point but it is using quite a bit of data. We can see our RX frames and our TX frames. Now Ubiquity includes this RF environment scanning. So we could scan the channels on our 2.4 and then our five gigahertz, and it's gonna tell us which channel is being most utilized. On our 2.4, there's only three channels that we could use. On our five gigahertz, it's quite a bit more. If we do scan these channels, it will take the access point down, so I'll do a scan and then we'll see the results. Here are the results from us doing the RF environments scan. So if we scroll down to the bottom, we can see the utilization scale. And at high, it's minus 48. And at our low, it's minus 96. So if we scroll up to the 20 megahertz, we can see that channel one is being very heavily utilized. 
and you could hover over that to take a look. Utilization on channel one is at 94%. So this AP, we wouldn't want that to be on channel one. The only three channels that we should be using within 2.4 is channel one, six, and 11. So we have two more to choose between. Channel six, we have about 25% utilization. And then channel 11, we have 6% utilization. So I'm gonna change this access point to be on channel 11 for the 2.4. So let's go over to settings. And at the top, we see that it's managed by global AP settings. I'm gonna uncheck that. I'm gonna uncheck the nightly optimization. And then we're gonna select the channel for the 2.4 gigahertz. The channel right now is on auto, but I'm gonna put it onto 11. After I set this, I'll scan the five gigahertz and see what we wanna put it at, and we'll press apply changes. Our five gigahertz channel scanning has finished, and we could see under the channel width of 40 that we have a bit of congestion on these channels here. The very first one, which would be channel 36, is only at 2% utilization, so that's what I'd probably use. If we go over and select channel 108 and 112, that is showing 47% utilization, and I believe those are DFS channels. So let's go over to settings. So under our five gigahertz radio, I'm gonna select the auto channel, and then we'll scroll down, and I'm gonna put this one on 36, but let's scroll down a bit. So from channel 52 all the way up to channel 144, that's set to DFS. And DFS is used for weather radar or military radar. So if they need to use it, your APs will get kicked off. So I always try to avoid using DFS channels. Now, another way to look at our channel interference is to go over to our insights. Here we could see Wi-Fi channel interference for our 2.4 and our five gigahertz. And you could see within our 2.4 that it's pretty heavily used. That's because we only have channel one, six and 11. And then over on our five gigahertz, it looks pretty wide open. This will also show you your neighboring access points. So all these APs aren't actually in my house. They're from different houses within my neighborhood. Now, another tool that Ubiquity provides, which is great for seeing your Wi-Fi coverage, is the Wi-Fi Man app with Signal Mapper. And this is a video that I put on the internet before, but let's take a look at it. As I'm walking around with my iPhone with Signal Mapper open, it is drawing in the walls and it's showing me this color code of my Wi-Fi signal. So this could really help out if you need to put an access point in a different location within your house. Now, one last thing that I'm gonna to touch on for this video is access point selection. So you need to read the specs to make sure you're getting what you want. For the U6 Pro, I use this one quite a bit in businesses and we could see that Wi-Fi 6 support is on the 2.4 and the five gigahertz. If we look at our in one six, it does the same. So on Wi-Fi 6 support on 2.4 and 5. But if you look at the U6 long range access point, it only supports Wi-Fi 6 on the 5 gigahertz. And then for the 2.4, it only does Wi-Fi 4. So that's something that you need to be aware of. And that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully it does help some of you out. If you have any recommendations of what you would do, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.